In this video, I'm gonna show you how not to do a skin fade. So just for context, this was an old video that we recorded back in the day. And then this barber actually was pretty good at cutting hair. I think she was just nervous or something like that. And the haircut did not turn out well, but I thought that it could be a useful training tool. because there's lots of videos on YouTube, especially on how to do a good skin fade, but I haven't seen a good one on how not to do a skin fade. So that's the idea with this video today. So we're gonna go through it together and I'm gonna be reacting to things that happen throughout the haircut. So that way you know what to, mistakes to avoid the next time you do a skin fade. So let's take a look. I'm gonna turn you so I can use the light. That's a, that's a good thing that she's done so far is she turned the client to the side. This was before we had the ring lights. So there was really only the lighting above the mirrors. So she turned the, the client to, so you could use the light. So that was actually a good thing that she did there. And I'm going to start with a one and a half guard on the wall cordless seniors, just to remove some bulk. So one thing she's doing right now that's not, it's not wrong, but what she's doing basically right now is debulking, which I always recommend debulking before you start the haircut. But in this case, the client really didn't have that much time in between his last haircut. So I like to debulk when it's been a while since their last haircut. It's not wrong. I just think it's kind of an extra step in this case, since the hair is not that short. I usually debulk in order to see what I'm doing. And in this case, it hasn't been that long since his last haircut. So I probably would have skipped this step here. And then I just push the top out of the way and kind of hold it with my comb, go all the way up to his part with the one and a half guard. I'm gonna open the clipper with the one and a half guard and just blend up into... So right now she's got a comb in her hand and uh, one of my rules is if I'm using something like a number one guard or lower, I got a brush in my hand. So the fact that she has a, has a comb is actually, I think, a good thing. You could go with a brush or a comb when you're at this length, but a comb is pretty good because like she just did earlier, which was good that she combed that hair out of the way that she didn't want to cut. When you're cutting hair, you want to make sure that you're cutting the hair that you want to cut, but it's also important to protect what you don't want to cut. So having a comb in your hand to help comb that hair out of the way so you can protect it, especially for comb overs, is a good thing. The top of his hair, which I will go back and cut later with scissors. So at this point, I don't use a comb anymore. I'm gonna brush my comb. So the first mistake here is uh, she's using her paintbrush. Paintbrush is a great tool for cleaning your clippers, but um, in between clients, you wanna use your paintbrush to clean and then disinfect the clippers. When you use your paintbrush to clean the clippers off in the middle of a haircut, you're actually infecting it with all of the things that came off the previous clients. So this is where the brush also comes in handy. Throughout the haircut, you can actually use the same brush that you're using to fade to clean the clippers off. But I wouldn't use the brush that you use to clean the clippers off in between because you're actually reinfecting the clipper. As barbers, the most important thing is to make sure that their tools are always sanitary. My clippers off because I would rather not have all that hair. And then I switch to a brush. So this is actually a good thing. Like I was mentioning earlier, if you're working with less with a number one guard or less, you want to switch to a brush. She could use the same exact brush to clean your clippers off, which would have kept the clipper sanitary during that last step. So a brush in the same clippers and then open. And I'm going to take it up to about. So everybody has different styles of fading. There's so many different ways to do a skin fade. Right now she's going in with the the clipper lever all the way open with no guard, what I would call a half. And uh, she's making her first guideline. I don't think this is wrong, but again, I think this is a little bit of a waste of time because if she's gonna go back in the next step to take that hair down even further, then there's no point of getting all that hair basically underneath that first guideline. If I were to do this, I would have just stick with the half, like just in that area and left all that length underneath. It would have looked, it looks weird, but there's, it's kind of no point of like cutting all of that just to have to go back in the next step and cut it all over again. And he's not getting a drop fade. So I follow that line all the way around to the other side. A drop fade is instead of going straight across, it would come down. The fade would be lower on the head and the back. Now I'm going to close my clippers and go into about here with closed to prepare to use the foils. So this is a uh, mistake number two that I'm seeing so far. So now she's going in with the, the cl same clipper with the lever all the way closed. And as you can see in this part, she's not giving herself a lot of room to get from that clipper lever closed to the last step that she just did with the lever all the way open. Um, I recommend, especially when you're first learning how to cut hair, that you give yourself at least an inch to get from that skin where it's completely bald to the half. 
and here is maybe a quarter inch. So that, that's one of the, the ways you can mess up a skin fade is just actually the most common way that I see is just barbers just not giving so, themselves enough room. So if you ever feel like you're struggling to get this line out, it's probably because when you were doing this step right here, you didn't give yourself enough room to get from the skin to the next step. So when you're doing this step, I would recommend give yourself at least an inch and you're gonna see later that she's gonna have trouble getting this line out just because there's not enough room to get from one step to the next. So now I'm gonna use the Andy's foil shaver and I'm gonna go up to that line that I just made with the closed flipper. So there's a couple of uh, mistakes that I'm, I'm seeing here again that so she just finished the step where she did the clipper lever all the way closed, which that's fine. She, and she's probably using clippers that are zero graft, which means that um, they're modified so that the lever is pushed closer, the blades are pushed closer together, and uh, that's gonna make the haircut shorter with the clipper. It still looks like this hair is a little long to me. So what's gonna happen is when she goes to use this shaver, it's gonna take longer to actually shave the hair down. Really difficult to remove later, as you'll see. Another thing that I'm gonna see here soon is that she's actually gonna take that line all the way to the previous, the, the shaver, all the way to that line that she just created. So you don't actually wanna do that because when you cut into your guide line, you're actually creating a new one. And so you would wanna take this shaver actually a little bit below that last step you just did because if you cut into that step, then you're actually creating a new line and it's gonna be really difficult to take that line out. So when you're doing the shaver part, you don't want to go to the guideline. You want to stop just below it. In smaller areas, I like to use just one foil. And then in bigger areas where there's more hair, I flip the foils over so that I can cover more area and get more hair off. That's actually a good tip that she just shared. When you're working just above the ears or in small spaces, I find it easier to just use the one foil. And when you're working like in the back of the head and you have plenty of room, flip it back over and use both just to get more work done. Using the one foil too allows you to be a little bit more precise when you're doing that, that flicking motion on the side of the head. So try that out next time you're doing one of these. Smaller areas, I like to use just one foil. And then- So you can start to see how, just how hard of a line this shaver's starting to leave. And when you see a line like that, it's, it's gonna be really difficult, particularly with this client who has thick black hair to remove that line. Justin has a little bit thicker hair, so it makes it a little bit easier to use your double foils instead of just one. And you can hear it in the foils if there's any hairs that it's picking up. If there's no hairs, it won't make any noise. Uh, look at how hard that line is. It's gonna be so difficult to remove. I'd be nervous if I just did that because I know I would know that that's, that's gonna be a really hard line to take out. So when you're doing skin fades like this, try to focus on making soft lines. Soft lines are easier to take out. Hard lines are hard to take out. So now, I take my Wall Senior Cortis Clippers and open about halfway, and I'm gonna go in and blend this line out. So I start at half, go all the way around. So there's nothing wrong with what she's doing here. I probably, I, I'd actually do the same exact step. The issue, like I mentioned, is that there's just not a lot of room to get from that hard skin line to the next step, which is the lever all the way open with no guard. So I think she's really gonna struggle with blending that bottom line out. But don't go above the darker line. So then I'm gonna close my clippers and then go in and blend out the rest. So now she's working with the lever all the way closed, which again, I, I would do the same exact step. But see, she just went over this area here and you can still clearly see the line. That hair is way too, sh too um, short for that area and that clipper is not gonna remove that line. So another rule of thumb of mine is like, what you use to make the line is what you're probably gonna have to use to take the line out. So really the only thing that can take that line out at this point is a really sharp clipper or trimmer or the shaver that she used to make the line. So now I'm gonna take my one guard because we used a one and a half in here and I'm gonna just blend up into the one and a half. Sometimes a technique that I use when I'm getting frustrated with a haircut is, I know she can clearly see that there's a line left and this is more of a time management thing but instead of trying to erase that line for half an hour or so, you just kind of move on to the next step. Don't stay stuck on the same area. Just keep going with your steps and then try to think about maybe how you're gonna attack that line later. But what she's doing right here is probably a good tactic. If you're, if you're struggling with a certain part of a haircut, just leave it there, move on, get through all the rest of your steps and then come back to that later. I start open.
So then I close my clipper blades and I'm gonna work up into that one. She's basically fading down now. She started with the last step was the number one guard with the lever open. And now she's going in with the number one with the lever closed and trying to stay just underneath the last step. Good technique. So now I'm gonna to switch to a half guard. And again, I start open and work my way around the head. Nothing wrong with what I'm seeing so far. And actually at this point, it's not too late to save the haircut. Cause sometimes when you're trying to raise the line, it's actually the hair above it that you need to take shorter and you'll work your way down to that line. If, you, if you're just chasing that line up, the fade just keeps going higher and higher. So sometimes it actually helps to start above that line and work your way down. So she could, at this point, she could still save the haircut. So I noticed that there's a little bit of a line. I'm just gonna open my clippers about halfway. Go over the spot that look a little dark. Hey, you know, uh, uh, I, so that, that's what I was just kind of shaking because I, I was actually the one recording this. I was just kind of shaking my head during the haircut and uh, towards the end because I was like, "This she knows how to fade. Like, just, I trained her. Like, she, she knows how to cut hair. I think she was just nervous <laughs> for this video because um, you know, like, normally this haircut she had no problem with, but just for whatever reason, she got nervous or whatever, but she just really struggled this time. So I'm going to clean off my foils so it doesn't transfer. Oh, there it is again. So <laughs> she's using the same dirty paintbrush that she uses to clean the clippers in between clients to clean off the foil shaver. So, you know, just a sanitation thing right there. Try to use, she has the brush in her hand too. So she could have used the brush that's in her left hand to clean the, the shaver off, but she decided to use the paintbrush. So for any of the loose hairs onto his head and there's still a line here. So what I do is I take my foils and I go down instead of up. Perfect. So that's a, that's a really great way to erase a hard line that you might take that you might make with the uh, shaver. The issue is though still that there's just not enough room to erase that line without creating a new line. So even though she's using good technique, there's just not enough space in that area that she's working in to completely erase that line. So she's gonna have issues trying to erase that line even though she's using good technique. I go down because it doesn't take as much hair off. Just kind of catches a few hairs at a time to help blend out the line versus if you go up, it's gonna clean pretty much all of the hair off. Another thing you can do if you're finding yourself in the same situation is rather than using the going down and tapping down with a whole shaver foil, you can actually use the corners just like you would with the clippers. So I would suggest that if you find yourself having difficulty removing a hard line like this, you can use the tap down motion like she's doing, or you can use just the corners of the shaver, either growing up or down. Just like with the clippers, using the corners is a lot safer. So if you end up going too short in an area, you're not creating a whole new line when you use just the corners. And shave all of the hair off. Helps it look more blurry. If you're newer to fading or if, if it's a new client that you've never cut before, regardless of what they ask you, give them a low fade, right? Because if you're, if, you're, if you're still learning how to fade or if you've never cut this client's hair before, you wanna start to fade lower than what they ask for, right? Or what you think it's gonna be because chances are you're gonna need more room to blend. So in this case, if she would have made the fade just a little bit lower, she would actually have the room to stretch that fade out and properly like remove those lines. Where with the fade already being high, she really doesn't have any room anymore to raise that fade much higher. Although I think a client would rather take a good high fade as opposed to a crappy low fade, it's always good, I think, to just start low because you can always raise the fade higher if the client, if that's what the client wants. So that created this little line here. I'm gonna blend that out and then we will start working on the top. So I'm gonna use the mirror behind me. There's a good, well right now you're about four feet, four foot of perspective. 
So what she's doing right now is actually a good technique. She's gonna start using the mirror to check her work, which is really good because when you start to get towards the end of a haircut, your eyes can start to lie to you, especially if it's been a long day. And using the mirror to give you a different perspective or even taking a couple steps back and looking at it from a different angle can actually show you the flaws in the haircut. You can actually take a picture too or just even pull out your phone and the camera can show you the flaws in the haircut too. But in this case, we pulled the chair a little bit further from the mirror just for recording sake than it actually would be. So it's making it a little bit harder for her to actually check in the mirror to, to see the flaws. Okay, so that looks about normal for your haircut. Look both ways for me. You look that way, the other way. Looks about right, right? So now I'm gonna cut the top. Just spray some water. And we're going down to finger length, right? A little bit longer. So this is a pretty interesting technique that she's using. Um, I don't know where she learned this from. I didn't, certainly didn't teach her this, but she's kind of grabbing like random sections of the hair to cut the top. And she's taking actually pretty big sections, so what you'll see is that it's gonna end up pretty uneven on the top, but she's actually gonna end up cross-checking the hair, which is great because you, it, it just shows that you don't even have to be good at cutting the top. As long as you cross-check it, you can, uh, you can end up getting the hair pretty even on top. So what I'm doing is I'm just cross-checking. So this is what I mentioned earlier about her cross-checking. So if you cut the hair from the front to the back, then you would cross-check it by stepping to the side and cutting it that way. So if you do that, it, it's gonna come out even almost every single time. So whether you start in the front and work your way back or you start on the side, you just check it the opposite way and that's how you make sure the haircut ends up even. Well, when you cut the hair a certain way, like if you go from front to back, basically to cross-check, you go in the opposite direction to make sure that all the hairs are cut evenly. Just making sure you're getting a good cut. And then typically, you'll have some dark spots over here. I'll just go in and lift it up, trim the very ends of it off with the scissors so that it blends. No guard first. Start open and work your way down to close. So all this is good. She just did the uh, scissor over comb technique to finish blending the top into the sides and now she's blending the beard trim. And so far no critiques here. Good technique. I'll do that on both sides. And I'm going to grab a half guard. I'm gonna finish off with a one guard. Open. Then I'm going to take my edgers. All right, so now she's doing a skin fade, so she's putting the hot towel on there, ladder, razor. Nothing wrong so far yet, except for that one part. So if you watch the way she wipes the, the razor off on the towel, it's actually uh, pretty dangerous <laughs> what she's doing there. And it makes sense why some of our towels have holes in it is because when you wipe the towel off the way she's doing it, you're, you're gonna end up cutting a hole in the towel and maybe even cutting your hand underneath. So m make sure when you're wiping the towel off that you actually have that blade flat on the towel because if it's pointing straight down towards the towel, you're gonna cut right through it. So I said it off camera, but I, I basically she was like about to let him up out of the chair and uh, I was like, hey, do you mind <laughs> tightening up that haircut a little bit? So that's what she's doing here. She's just. She's trying to see what I saw and um, you know, she's trying to make that blend look a little bit smoother. Because you can see there's just a little a ring around the client's head and all she has to do is kind of lighten up that hair and she actually did a pretty good job of erasing that hard line but it's that hair above that line that's so dark that's making it look like it's not blended. Yeah, so I think I ended up giving up on this, <laughs> on this video and uh, I tried to edit it in a way so you can't see the back but uh, clearly, you know, from the comments when we first posted this video, like it wasn't good enough editing job. So I ended up making this video private, but I thought 
Later on, we could use this video as a reaction video to kind of show you what not to do. But basically, I think this whole haircut would have been different if she just would have given herself a little bit more room in the beginning when she was making her first guide. So if you're doing a skin fade like this and you're trying to learn, just keep that skin line, of that first one, a little bit lower than what you'd like because you need that room if you're new to skin fade or if you've never cut this client before. Just give yourself more room than you think you're going to need because if you don't need it, you can always raise the fade higher. But if you do, you're going to be really glad you have it. So I hope you guys found that useful.